Today we are talking about battle farms and Rise of Kingdoms. This is one of the best strategies in terms of fighting power that you're able to bring to your kingdom to allow you to fight longer and kill a lot more troops for your kingdom without having to be a whale. So this allows you to have lower amount of power and have a higher amount of kills and deads in KVK. So the reason why battle farms are so important and so vital for larger kingdoms is because eventually main accounts are going to run out of troops. Uh, once you have tons and tons of you know deads in a KVK, you might run out of your T5 and even your T4 troops that you're using to put in flags, put in rallies, put in forts that you are probably going to need in Kingsland. And so one really good strategy in Rise of Kingdoms is using farms in order to fill passes, in order to fill rallies, things that you don't really want to waste all your troops on your main account for. Like for example, in a zone five, a zone six fight, where you want to save as much troops as you can for later zones in order to be able to fight properly in the field. So being able to kill off farm account troops are a lot more beneficial because it saves you both time, resources, and troops on your main accounts. So today we are going to be showing you guys exactly what you should be doing with your battle farms and how you should make them as well. So when it comes to battle farms, obviously it starts as a regular farm. And you can see I have my farm colony right here. I average about 25 million power between all these accounts, some of them being higher than other ones. I guess my lowest is 23 million and my highest is 47. So I guess average is probably about 33 million power. And you know, one thing that is really, really beneficial with this many farm counts is how many troops you can actually train. So, you know, usually you're only able to train about 2000 troops a day per troop type. And when you add in this many farm accounts, seven different farm accounts for myself, I'm able to train 14,000 of each unit basically every single day, all being T4. And you know, day by day, that adds up quite a bit. So you can see here, I have 1.6 million T4 infantry. I have one, almost 1.4 million T4 calves, almost 1 million T4 archers, and almost 1 million T4 siege as well. So this is very, very beneficial when it comes to filling flags, filling forts, and just allowing yourself to kill troops on farm accounts that you really don't care about. Now, the one thing when it comes to battle farms is that resources, especially food, wood, and stone, are going to be used more so for healing your own hospital. So when it comes to you know healing your hospital, you are definitely going to want to make sure that you keep some resources in your account. So you can see here I have 93,000 T4 sub wounds on this account currently. And you know this isn't a lot of resources, but on a farm account when you are, are sending resources to your main account, if you drain your entire account of all your resources, you're going to have a lot more deads, which means you won't be able to fill stuff as long. And with farm accounts, you're gonna have a lot of resources saved up as well. Uh, you know, like even just hitting barbarians in the Lost Kingdom. Uh, you know, like I made a video a couple days ago about how I use farm accounts to kill barbarians and what's better, barbarians or barbarian forts. So you can see in this account, I do hit barbarians in the Lost Kingdom. I do have a lot of healing speed ups and especially universals. I have a lot of universals saved up as well. And I use those all for healing and sometimes training troops, depending on if I have events that I'm pushing for, or, you know, in pre KVK when I'm helping boost the kingdom score, I will push troops on farm accounts as well, because it's always nice to have more troops. So using these accounts to fill things in KVK are extraordinarily important because, you know, the best kingdoms are doing it. 1960 is very well known for using farm accounts to fill structures, uh, 1034, uh, really all that the top kingdoms are using the strategy in order to benefit their kingdom entirely so training t4 is extremely important on these accounts and you know training training t4 is actually pretty expensive as well in the grand scheme of things so uh, per account this is basically 1 million total resources of food and wood and you know it definitely adds up over time and you know the one thing you could argue is just doing t1 siege instead but I, I just do T4 Siege because if you have, you know, a mixed garrison and anything goes, if, if I run out of my T4 infantry, calves, and archers, I want to have something that's a higher unit that I can put in. Like, I'm not going to put T1 Siege into a flag if I'm trying to, you know, like mass fill it, trying to keep it alive. I'm not going to put T1 in there. Even if it's Siege, I'm not going to do that. Uh, so having T4 Siege as a last case scenario is important, um, but, you know, not as important personally. 
I would rather just switch to a different account and use that one instead because you know each of these accounts has millions and millions of T4 troops in it. And you know the other benefit with this is that it makes your farm accounts basically like impenetrable to uh, people that are rogue. So when it comes to rogue players, they typically look for weaker accounts. And you know, 31 million power or say like 23 million power, these look like really easy accounts to zero and steal all the resources for. Even 47 million power is probably on that verge of like, oh, I can probably zero that guy and take all of his resources. You know, 300 million of each resource, that's gonna go a long way of you know being able to stay rogue longer. Um, be able to train more troops, heal your hospital, etc. But that is why investing into garrison commanders is so important. And you can see I have a max YSS. I actually have enough sculptures to max my Zenobia as well. So I still have to make a video on this on maxing my Zeno. Probably going to be posting a short on that eventually as well. Um, but I will have a max Zeno, max YSS on this farm account. And on top of that, I do have some gear as well. Obviously not great. If I were ever to migrate out of 1079, I would obviously craft a lot of uh, gear for my garrison. Um, and, you know, I, I have tons and tons of materials saved up on this account as well uh, because, you know, I don't really have any need for this stuff. So you can see I have tons of legendary materials. I have plenty of materials that I can, you know, use for crafting in the future if I ever decide to. Um, but, you know, in the meantime, it's just not worth it spending that much gold, especially if I can send it to my main account. Uh, because like I said, like you're going to need a lot of food, wood, and stone, but gold is one thing you will not need. So I like to be able to send that to my main account from my farm accounts. And so when you look at the total amount of resources I've sent, most of this is actually going to be in gold because that's mostly what I gather on my farm accounts. I have made other videos on farm accounts where I do send food, wood, and stone in. Like this last KVK, I did drain all my farm accounts. And now each of them has about 400 million of each resource, obviously gold and stone a little bit less, but about 400 million food and wood, depending on the account. Obviously, some of these accounts are able to train more troops than others, depending on the level of the, uh, you know, the training, training stations and also how many bastions I did with them as well. Like on this account, I did a lot more bastions with because I would bring it into uh, the main alliance and do bastions to get more season coins because this account is really close to being really able to afford a city skin. So a couple more KVKs, I'll be able to get a city skin in the KVK shop on this account, which would be really, really nice. Um, you know, on top of that being high VIP is really important as well, especially if you are mass filling structures because, you know, having extra troop defense or eventually troop health, uh, having a higher hospital capacity is huge. So eventually being able to level up your VIP is gonna be really important in order to A, send more troops, um, B, have stronger troops, so that way if you are filling from a structure here and people try to swarm you or if you get hit by AoE, you're not going to take as many sev wounds for basically nothing. Um, but when it comes to building a farm account, that is really what I also want to talk about here today, in which you first have to make an account in a brand new kingdom. And what you do here is you go into create new account, so create new character, and it really depends on what KVK you are in as well. And so if you are in a KVK2, for example, I had somebody reach out to me about this question. Their name is Reckless, so huge shout out to Reckless for the idea for this video. But if you are in a KVK2 kingdom and you are wanting to get a farm account into that kingdom, if you were you know, trying to make an account in say 1079 in my kingdom here, like yes, you could do that, but you will not be able to migrate it into the same kingdom as your current account until you are in Season of Conquest or KVK4 and beyond. The reason why is because of the cross-season migration, you are not able to migrate backwards from KVK4 to KVK2 all the time. You only have a limited amount of spots to do that. So if I go into Kingdom Overview and I look for Season 2, and then you can see there actually are no kingdoms in the off-season before Season 2 right now. But if you look into the Lost Kingdoms list, you can see the kingdoms are in the 3200s right now um, for the amount of people that are in KVK2. So you can see 3100, end of the 3100s is the last section right now, um, up to close to 3300 now for the, the newest KVK2 kingdom. And so this would be where you'd be able to choose the kingdom you're going to migrate to. However, these kingdoms are also probably bringing in the maximum amount of T5 players from Season of Conquest that they can if they want to be competitive in Season of Conquest. 
if they want to be competitive in their KVK, because chances are every other kingdom is going to be doing that. So if you don't, you're going to be losing out on a lot of potential whales you could have come in and help carry your kingdom. So that's the other big disadvantage in migrating a farm account into a KVK2 is that you really won't be able to. So ideally, you're going to want to create an account in a KVK2 kingdom. So for example, say these kingdoms were not in KVK yet, and you are in kingdom 3221 here, and you want to create a farm account and migrate it into your current kingdom. And it's like, like I said before, say they're not in KVK, they're in before KVK even starts, and you make an account in kingdom 3220 or 3223, really any of these other kingdoms, you would be able to then migrate that account into 3221 with no issues because that would not be cross season migration. That would be season in season migration. So that is what you'd have to do. So you would have to create an account from scratch. You'd go through the entire tutorial as well. So you would create a brand new account. You would do the entire tutorial and you would have to start grinding credits. So this is why I recommend people find a kingdom that they know people in. That is why KVK2 is so much harder to create an account in because you really don't know a whole lot of people versus in Season of Conquest, most people are in Season of Conquest. And so you're able to you know, make friends in the game and find out which kingdoms you can make an account in. Like for example, if, if one of my subscribers needed to make a farm account and needed to join 1079 to, um, you know, farm credits, join a farm alliance, and um, you know, join the one troop flags to get credits enough to buy a passport, they would be able to do so. And I would be able to help them out with that by getting R4 in one of our farm alliances and, and helping you get that passport. And so that's one big benefit of Season of Conquest is there's way more kingdoms to do that in. Like I said before, the kingdoms that are in KVK2 are in the 3200s, and the kingdoms from 1001 all the way up to 3200 are in season of conquest essentially obviously some in kvk3 but basically anything under 3000 is season of conquest so there are way more kingdoms in season of conquest than there are in kvk2 and 3. so that is why i tell people either make a farm account right away in kvk1 like as you should and then if you want to create extra farm accounts outside of the, the two that you can make in your kingdom you have to find a kingdom that you know people in if you make friends in kvk1 that's awesome That'd be a great opportunity to you know meet people to then make a farm account in that kingdom they can help you get those credits they can help you get the passport as well to then migrate into your new account and then you'll be able to have that farm and that is when you can start building your battle farm and when building your battle farm obviously technology is something you want to push because you know a you want to have troops to do so but b you want to have t4 troops so you absolutely need to make sure you get to t4 as soon as possible so getting your city hall to level 21 at least, that way you can unlock these special units and get to the feudal age here. So that is what you really need to focus on. And then eventually getting city hall 25 is a huge milestone as well that you should be pushing to. Um, eventually maxing out all the different buildings, trying to max out your training stations here as well in order to train the most amount of troops. I still need to do that. Once we have our next lucky coin stall, I will probably be doing that, upgrading all these to level 25. Just because you know i have basically all these level 25 but i don't have my training units at level 25 yet so that's probably my next priority but technology is going to be huge if you want to try to push a training post that'd be a benefit as well if you want to send gold and other resources but like i said before you want to make sure you still have resources on your battle farms in order to you know be able to heal troops that way you're not taking needless deads um because you know half the troops that you send in a rally or a garrison unless it's a city rally is going to be sev wounds so you know when you send something i wonder if i have any favorites here right here so if i look here you can see in this rally in this flag uh we are taking you know some sev wounds and some deads so if your hospital overflows really really quickly or you don't have the amount of resources to heal you're going to take a lot of needless deads which then makes the trade worse so you want to make sure you still have resources on that account in order to heal your hospital if you guys enjoyed this video please do me a favor and drop a like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments below if you guys have any battle farms and if so, how many do you have and what power are your battle farms? Because I know some people whose battle farms are actually more powerful than my main account, which is cool. <laughs> so uh, that is one uh, cool thing I like to hear about is how much power people have on their farm accounts because it's, it's honestly crazy how powerful 
some farm accounts really are. So feel free to drop that in the comments below. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any other questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below and I'd be happy to answer your question. Thanks for checking out the video. Have a great rest of your day.